Um, this paper is, is based on research that myself and colleague Matthew Hart started around a year ago um, and seeks to examine some of the social processes that have contributed to the development of incels or involuntary celibates, as, as they're known. Um, now, we're at quite an early stage of this research, but, but from some um, preliminary observations and, and drawing on some of the literature to, to date, have begun to develop some um, lines of inquiry, which I want to present to you today. OK. Um, there we go. That's better. So just um, in terms of, of an outline, um, I, I'll, I'll briefly explain to you what we mean by incels. Um, then, then explain some of the, the limited academic research on incels, which, which is, is really limited. Um, and, and then I'll go on to, to explain our, our kind of lines of inquiry for research in this area. Um, and specifically looking at incels as part of long-term processes, um, incels and the, the, problem of, um, the problems of latent ambivalence and, and integration conflicts. Mm. And related to that, um, the, the problem of incels and emotional identification. Okay, so, so, so what do we mean by incels? Um, the term incels, incel has developed as a form of predominantly online identity that groups of, of certain men have given to themselves. Um, and they identify, as I said, as involuntary celibate. Um, now, one of the problems that we've found is that empirical and demographic data on incels is, is really very limited, partially because they're online. But incels can typically be defined as being young heterosexual men whose sexual advances upon women are uh, undesired and unreciprocated. Um, this, this kind of deprival contributes to incels harbouring a deep hatred of women um, who they often refer to as stasis, but also they hate men as well, or sexually successful men, or who they see as sexually successful men, who they refer to as chads. Um, and they, they feel that these, these chads, these other men, um, are, are undeserving recipi recipients of, of women's emotional and physical intimacy. Um, also, from what we, we know, they appear to be predominantly from um, Western countries. OK, so one important aspect of incels is their, their ideology. Um, and key to this is, is that incels blame women um, for incels inability to form sexual and intimate relationships. Um, at the same time, incels see themselves as victims of a, this, this kind of misandrist culture that's dominated by feminism. This is kind of at the heart of their, their ideology. Um, and they consider their, their, their view of traditional gender relations as, as a kind of ideal, this, this kind of harking back to this, a, a lost golden past. Um, and this is an ideal in which, for them, women had fewer power chances relative to men. Um, and, and as I said, it's something that, that they feel has been lost and needs to be returned to. Um, and incels are also a group that has tended to be placed under the banner of, of Manosphere, um, which includes a variety of, of groups that are, are anti-feminist, misogynistic um, and often have links to the far right and the uh, the alt right um, and, and as part of these groups they draw on um, the Hollywood film The Matrix um, and what they refer to as red pill philosophy which members of the Manosphere claim uh, as a, a kind of awakening to the real world of this this feminist misandry they see as enveloping the, the whole of the world at the moment. Um, as with other parts of the Manosphere, um, the far right more generally and, and other extremist groups, and as uh, Debbie Jing has pointed out, they, they tend to draw very heavily but quite superficially on evolutionary psychology in which genetics are claimed to be a sole determinant of 
of male and female behaviour. Um, and their ideas include tropes that women are irrational, that they seek alpha males, um, and that women need to be dominated. Um, incels believe a man's sexual success is almost entirely determined by these kind of unalterable biological traits. So things like um, a man's jawline, his cheekbones, um, the shape of his eye socket. And so their view is that, that modern Western society is kind of defined as a, a kind of sexual class system. Um, another key point is that they, they claim that traditional masculine identities uh, are under threat. Um, and as with other parts of the manosphere, um, they see themselves as, as forming part of a, a kind of vanguard against the erosion of their ideal typical masculine identity. And, and as I said, this involves the, the domination of women. Um, now, at the very extreme end, um, incels have been associated with violent attacks, violent terrorist attacks. Um, Self-identified incels have been involved in attacks in, in California in, in 2014, in which seven people were killed. Um, another example was when killed by another self-styled incel in, in Toronto in 2018. And so the potential for this movement is, is really quite great. OK. So, as I said, the, the kind of field to date on incels is um, is relatively limited, um, but it, it, it's, it's kind of been dominated by um, gender studies with both patriarchy and neoliberalism being the kind of undergirding relations from which present day misogyny and the incel phenomenon appear to have emerged. Um, but within this, this kind of limited field, terms like patriarchy and hegemonic masculinity tend to be used uncritically um, and are, are really kind of taken for granted in the literature. Um, so in a similar way to, to Mansfield's and, and Liston's critique of, of gender studies in the field of the sociology of sport, um, we suggest that research to date on the insult phenomenon tends to be ahistorical and reduces the problem almost solely to um, the field of gender relations, or at best, gender relations in combination with, with class relations. Um, at the same time, the focus is almost entirely on how, um, more broadly, gender relations are constraining on women and to a lesser extent on men. Again, this is drawing on, on uh, Liston and Mansfield. Rather than the idea, um, that um, variable functional interdependence of the sexes can be both enabling and constraining of, of men and women. So it's this, this kind of variable functional interdependence, which is kind of key for us. Um, and so we suggest that these processes of enablement and constraint um, can develop concurrently, but are part of these processes that, that have contributed to the development of, of incels. OK, um, so now I want to kind of explore briefly some, some lines of inquiry that we believe could bear fruit in our understanding of incels. Um, so as suggested, incels base their, their ideology very much on their ideas of themselves as a, an identity, as, as heterosexual men, but heterosexual men as being under attack. Um, their aim is to reassert what they regard as their vision of a, a kind of traditional masculine identity. And, and as I said, in which men dominate women. Um, we suggest that kind of incels appear to belong to a, a growing number of groups that embrace identity politics, including those based on whiteness, on masculinity and, and heterosexuality. Uh, and we ask the question, in which ways has the broader context of identity politics incel identity included, come about as part of long-term processes that have manifested in variations of homoclausus self-images. Uh, and we believe we can kind of perhaps talk of the incel identity as one of uh, homo masculinus. This kind of closed off incel self um, contributes to 
uh, the incel understanding of the world in which they set their own self-image against a range of other groups, but predominantly, as I said, feminists and men and women who believe, uh, who they believe, who incels believe, are successful in finding sexual partners. Um, and they've developed this very kind of stark demarcation between themselves and these groups based on, on their ideas of identity, and in particular masculine identity. Um, and as suggested, while most research on, on incels is, is very present-centred, we believe it's important to consider the problem within the context of long-term shifting power dynamics between men and women. Um, so another line of inquiry for us is, is an examination of relations between men and women and changing codes of behaviour in which there are various uh, alterations in the balances between external constraints and um, internal psychical constraints. Um, so we suggest that an examination of the changing balances of formalisation and informalisation informalization in behavioural codes between men and women can allow us to shed some light onto some aspects uh, of how behavioural standards and external and internal constraints might play a part in the development of incels and potentially other problematic gender behaviours. This is because a central feature of inceldom is related to how they conduct themselves with women as part of their failed quest for intimate and sexual relations. In this context, they tend to, to draw on so-called pickup artist behavioural codes, which tend to be uh, misogynistic and othering and kind of really fit this, um, this sense of a, an incel uh, self, an incel um, self-identity. Um, but despite this, it appears that those who identify as incels tend to be either unable or unwilling to successfully negotiate this kind of complex multitude of, of social codes associated with developing intimate and sexual relation, relationships with women. Um, but as we've already suggested, they experience this as, as problematic to their self-image. They see themselves as, as victims in a world which they see their rightful position as men as having been undermined by women. Okay. Um, so within this context of, of long-term power dynamics between men and women and the development of the kinds of self-images incels have, we also ask to what extent do incels hold forms of, of latent ambivalence towards women? As part of this, we'll explore a contradiction that appears to be central to inceldom. That is, why do they hold a desire for intimacy and sexual relationships with women while at the same time express loathing for women and uh, related um, emancipatory movements. And this relates to another strand of our proposed research, um, and that is to what extent are incels a manifestation of an integration conflict between men and women? That is, to what extent are factual increases in women's power potential contributing to fears among incels of a loss of status and meaning in their lives? Relatedly, to what extent do those fears contribute to the kinds of fantasies, conspiracies, misogyny and pseudoscience that form incel ideology? Um, now, evidence of similar processes can be observed in earlier studies. For example, in his work on sport and masculinity, Dunning suggests that expressions of misogyny, homophobia and aggressive masculinity which he found were apparent in many rugby songs, came about in the context of relatively slight yet significant equalising shifts in the balance of power between men and women um, from the second half of the 18th century. Um, Dunning demonstrates how these songs often, invo often involved symbolic representation of sexually powerful women, but who were both mocked and dealt with violently or aggressively. And so, to compare this to incels, this kind of misogyny, um, including against who they regard as sexually powerful women, is also evident in the, the language of incels. So there appears to be some parallels with respect to this, and this suggests um, uh, that there could be aspects of an integration conflict here, or this is an emanation of, of that. 
Okay. Um, so this this kind of development of, of fantasy based knowledge by incels um, about feminism, women, and, and practices associated with sexual and intimate relations is also indicative of processes in which spans of emotional identification with other groups either expands or or recedes. In the case of incels, it appears that their scope for emotional identification in relation to women has receded. At, at a general level, the retreat to narrow spheres of emotional identification tends to be related to growing fears among groups. Um, when groups come uh, to fear that the values, symbols, the more general way of life that they see as theirs is under threat, as, as it appears that incels do. And there is a tendency for some members of those groups to retreat to narrower spans of emotional identification uh, and ultimately to focus on primary social groups. And in this case, we see incels focusing on what they see as their primary social group. Um, so we'll, we'll aim to examine whether or not this has been the case with incels. Um, that is, we believe it's important to consider what incels uh, perceived low social status and the fears they have over what they perceive to be a loss of status for men more generally have actually contributed to a reduction in emotional identification with women. If, if this is the, the case, such a reduction would appear to run against these broader level processes in which over the long, longer term, as human groups become more functionally interdependent, spheres of emotional identification have tended to, to expand overall in a much longer term level. Um, now, this process of a reduction of the scope of emotional identification among incels towards women can be understood in the con context of the, the sexual emancipation of women in what Wouters has described as the lust balance, in which women in the 20th century increasingly became sexual subjects as well as uh, sexual objects. Accordingly, men and women increasingly experience the opposite sex as, as sexual subjects, more than sexual subjects, which in broad terms demonstrates a greater degree of emotional identification between men and women. It appears from incels um, that incels only regard women as, as sexual objects, as something uh, to be possessed and to fulfill their, their own desires for, for intimacy and sex. Um, which is potentially evidence of a reduction of emotional identification towards women. Um, at the same time, they only appear to emotionally identify with their own narrow group. Um, so incels could be an example of a men's movement mirroring what Wouters has referred to as an emancipation cramp. This, uh, Wouters suggests, was experienced in the, in, in the women's sexual liberation movement and involved fears around expressing oneself as a sexual subject. Um, this, suggests Wouters, was highlighted especially in the, the anti-pornography movement of the 1980s. Incels appear to mirror this, but rather than an emancipation cramp, their unwillingness to accept women as sexual subjects is more of an accommodation cramp as they see women merely as objects to be dominated and not as their equals. And so at a broad level, such reductions in the scope for emotional identification and, and related dehumanization has had, as suggested at the beginning of this presentation, violent and, and tragic consequences. And so better ways of understanding incels than those currently in the field uh, seem necessary. OK, and, and just to summarise, um, this is what we're going to focus on. So an understanding of incels that takes into account the variable functional interdependence between men and women. Incels as an example of long term, of the long term development of homoclausis forms of identification. Um, the problems of latent ambivalence uh, and incels developing as part of integration conflicts and this issue, as I've just mentioned of emotional identification and the lust balance. OK, that's it. Thank you, Michael.